What is up, everybody? It's Mr. Cassandra here, giving you the lesson on Chapter 6.5, Solving Special Systems of Equations. So let's jump right to it. We have learned how to solve systems of equations the following ways. One, by graphing. Two, by substitution. And three, by elimination. Elimination can be used for solving a system of equations, and elimination is also used against me in Fortnite. Whenever I play, I'm usually about 65th place or so before I get the elimination method used on me in Fortnite, but that's neither here nor there. So, so far, all of the problems we have done have been lines intersecting at exactly one point. This is called a consistent, independent system. There are two other possibilities. One, it is possible that the two lines will never touch. We call those parallel lines. If the lines are parallel, they will have the same slope. Let me put that in big letters. Same slope, but different y-intercepts. They will never share a point which means they will never intersect these lines this system I should say this system is called inconsistent okay the other case is if two lines have the same slope and same y-intercept then these lines are actually the exact same line. So they share every point. This system has infinitely many solutions because every point that they have is the same and is called a consistent dependent system. Okay, so those are the notes. And um, I am going to see if this works. I am going to share this YouTube video with you right now. This is the two lines 
they cross, they intersect, and they just have one common solution, right? The second thing that could happen is that they could actually be the same line, so they actually could be crossing at an infinite number of points, okay? And then the third case is that the two lines could actually be parallel, which means that they'll never cross, so there's going to be no common point of intersection or no solution. So as far as the terminology goes, when there's no solution, when the lines are parallel, this is called inconsistent, okay? So that just means that there's no there's no point of intersection, you know, there's no point that they share in common. Now over here, there is a solution, and these are called consistent, but when there's one solution, this is called consistent independent, okay? And when there's an infinite solution where there's the same line like that, that's called consistent dependent. Okay, so I'm just abbreviating there. So these are consistent, this one's inconsistent, but for the ones that have a solution, the consistent ones, it could be one solution independent or infinitely many uh, consistent dependent. Okay, let's look at some examples. Let's see if we can talk about how to determine, you know, what type of a system that this is. So if we look at this first example here, one way to approach this is to rewrite the equations in the slope intercept form of the line. So you can tell what the slope is, what the y intercept is, and you get an idea about how many solutions they're going to have. I'm going to show you two different ways to do these problems. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. If I do that, I get y equals negative 3x plus 12. Now you remember the number in front of the x here, that's the slope. If they have a different slope, they're going to be going up at a different rate. And what that means is they're just going to cross at one point. So we know there's just going to be one solution to this uh, system. Um, and so that's, that's exactly what's going to happen here. Now another way to do this problem is to use either the substitution or the elimination method. And what you would do is, in this case, since we know that y equals 2x minus 1, we can put that in place of y in the second equation. So I'm just going to do that right now and show you what happens. So basically, we end up getting 5x minus 1 equals 12. If we add 1 to both sides, we get 5x equals 13. And if you divide by 5, you can see that x equals 13 fifths. If we put 13 fifths back in for x, we're going to get the y coordinate of the point where the two lines cross. And so we can see there's just going to be one solution. Okay, if we go to this example here now, let's do the same thing. Let's go ahead and rewrite this into the slope intercept form of the line, the y equals mx plus b form, right? If we divide everything by 2, we get the y by itself, we see that we get y equals negative 2x plus 1. And you can see that's the exact same equation that we have here. So what that tells us is that it's this scenario here where the two lines are actually right on top of one another, and they're crossing at an infinite number of points. So that's called consistent dependent, and there's an infinite number of solutions. Now, if you didn't want to do it that way by rewriting the equation, you just wanted to jump right into the substitution or elimination method, Let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you what happens. So since we know that y equals negative 2x plus 1, we're going to put that in place of y in the second equation, okay? That's called a substitution method. And if we do that, let's just go ahead and simplify. So if we distribute the 2, we get negative 4x plus 2, bring down this 4x, right? 4x and negative 4x cancel and we get 2 equals 2. Now when you get the same thing that equals the same thing, that's, that's called an identity. It means that the left side and the right side are identical. And what that means is that these two um, lines are exactly the same. So they're going to be crossing at an infinite number of points. Now, if you got something like 2 equals 3 or 0 equals 5, then that doesn't make any sense. And that's called, it's called inconsistent. And then no matter what you put in for x, uh, you know, the two, um, the two lines are just not going to cross. They're not going to have a point in common. So let's look at this third example. Let's do the same thing we've been doing by solving for y and putting it into the slope intercept form of the line. So I'm just subtracting the 9x from both sides, right? <clears throat> Divide everything by 3, you want to get the y by itself, right? So now when you look at these two equations, what do you notice? They have the same slope, negative 3, but they have different y-intercepts. So what that means is they're going up at the same rate, or in this case going down at the same rate because they have a negative slope, but they have different y-intercepts, so it means that they're, they're not going to cross. If we were to graph these, so one's up here at positive 4 and it has a negative 3 slope and one here is crossing at positive 1 and it has a negative 3 slope and you can see they're not going to cross but if you didn't want to do this graphing method or do the slope intercept form what you could do is you could do like we've been doing take this quantity here substitute it in for y in the second equation and let's just see what happens so I'm just doing the substitution method distribute the 3 look what happens here Again, you notice the 9x and the negative 9x, see the variables canceling out. And then what we're left with is uh, basically what's called a, you know, a nonsensical answer. It doesn't make any sense. Like 3 equals 12, that'll, that'll never be true. And what that indicates to us is that these lines, they don't have a point in common. They're not going to cross 
it's inconsistent. You could say there's no solution. And uh, that's how you would approach these different uh, systems. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out more math tutoring. All right, so over here in the second example, when he tried to use the substitution method, you notice that the variable canceled out. When the variable cancels out, if the left side equals the right side, that means that it is consistent, dependent, it is the same line. However, if you use the substitution method or the elimination method and the variable disappears, and you end up with something that is not true, like three equals 12 in this example, you have parallel lines. So the man with the incredibly shiny head that just did this video um, did an excellent job of explaining how there was an example with one solution, uh, infinitely many solutions, and then no solution. So hopefully this video and the notes helped you out. You also have your online book to help you. You can shoot me a private message or an email. I mean, there is no end to the support that you have. So please um, do your homework and let me know um, if you have any problems. Thank you and have a good day.